If you walk east of the Bethesda ruins, you'll see a ruined overpass towering in the sky above. Following this overpass takes us northeast, until at length we stumble upon a paved road. This road takes us through the ruins of a small pre-war community, through a roundabout, until at length we find a ruined semi-truck lying to the side of the road. In the back of the semi, we find a small store of metal boxes. We often find boxes like these empty, but in this case, only one of them is empty. The rest all have loot. In the very back, we find a table that inexplicably is standing upright, upon which is a mini-nuke, a copy of U.S. Army 30 Handy Flamethrower Recipes, some railway spikes, and a stim pack. However, just as we loot the mini-nuke, raiders attack. Well, it sounded like raiders. Looks like it was only one. Sharon and Dogmate took good care of them. At the very back of the truck, we find a personal footlocker, but it's locked with a very hard lock. We could open this if we have 100 in lock picking. Otherwise, we need to find a key. Looks like raiders, possibly the one we killed, have tried to get into this locker in the past, but failed. We see their frustration written on the bottom of this truck. Charming raiders, charming. Heading out, we begin to follow the road north, when by chance, we see a skeleton draped over a nearby rock. Its bones have been bleached by the wasteland's unforgiving sun. On the ground near to the skeleton is a wooden box, but we don't find anything under it. Though if we look closely, we find a golden driver's key lying on the ground, camouflaged amongst the moss and stone. This must be the remains of the driver of the truck we just passed. And this driver's key must open the locked footlocker in the back. Sure enough, the key is a perfect fit. And inside the footlocker, we find a combat shotgun, a small stash of scrap and ammunition, and a copy of Chinese Army Special Ops Training Manual. That's two skill books already. And we've only just begun exploring. And it seems like our activity in this truck is piquing the curiosity of the locals. An outcast patrol chooses this moment to roll on by. But as of yet, we've got no problems with the outcasts. Heading north down the road, we see three smokestacks loom in the distance, and it's then we get attacked by a gang of raiders. Well, goodness, had we not intervened, they would have collided with the outcasts. Part of me is sad I did intervene. That would have been quite a battle. Oh, well, at least we saved the lives of these outcasts. Though they were in power armor, probably would have fared well. But this road ends at a T-junction. We could travel east or west, or we can continue north to explore this ruin from which the three smokestacks emerge. We find ourselves on a rocky ledge overlooking this building. Below us, we see a blue truck, and we begin to take on rads. Peering down, we see a dumpster and some toxic barrels inside. But wait, what's that? We see spatters of blood and a book. Is that another skill book? Hopping on down? Sure enough, it's a big book of science. Well, we're well on our way to stocking a library with all the books we're finding today. But now we're stuck in this dumpster. We see blood on the ground and bloody handprints nearby. That's because there should be bodies back here, but for some reason in my game they were missing. I think it's because I had ventured close to this point at some time in the past, which triggered the bodies to spawn and triggered their decomposition clocks. So they spawned and decomposed long before I ever came here. We can climb out of the dumpster by leaping atop the toxic barrels, and then head north to get a better look at this building. The windows on the outside are broken. There's concrete rubble all over the place. We see a little alleyway to the west. Following it inside, we see that it's a big L shape. It turns north, bringing us to a big parking lot. We have discovered the Corvega Factory. This is coincidental. We just finished exploring the Chrysler's building, 
Chrysler is the name of the company that made the Corvega cars. They had just released the Atomic V8 when the bombs dropped. They were really proud of that car. Looks like this factory may be the place where the Atomic V8 was assembled. This got me curious, and so heading south, we can open the double doors to enter. We find ourselves in a our corporate lobby, and almost immediately, we get spotted by... Ants? Hey. What's the matter, huh? Can't stand the sight of your own blood? Well, that's unusual. We usually find super mutants or raiders occupying big factories and offices like this. But ants? What are ants doing here? Sure enough, we see a two-door atomic V8 on display here in the lobby. Behind the reception desk, we see an ant egg clutch with some ant meat inside. Oh dear. Could we have stumbled upon an ant nest? On the desk, we find some darts and a copy of Lying Congressional Style, book number four. Well, we see a few paths forward. There is a staircase leading up to some sort of loft or balcony area, or we could travel south underneath it to the adjoining room. And here we find more ants. We hear more skittering around back there, but we don't see any yet. There's a counter with a coffee machine and coffee cups laid out. And turning around, we find another ant. All right, sounds like there are a bunch up there. I'm gonna jump up on this big pile of rubble beneath this gorgeous Corvega Atomic V8 sign, Driving Paradise. It's a beauty to shoot these suckers as they come by. We hear more, but we don't see more. We see the sun shining through the broken ceiling above. There's even a desk peeking out from that top layer, but we can't reach it from here. We could go up the stairs behind us, but instead, I want to make sure we didn't miss anything on that loft area. So heading back to reception, we can go upstairs where we find a Talon Company mercenary lying dead on the ground. I wonder what Talon Company was doing here. Going east across the walkway leads to some of the corporate offices. We'll start by passing through the northeastern door. We see desks, and upon one is another big book of science. Book number five. Holy cow. I really am going to be able to start a library after this. We loot more caps and minor scrap from the filing cabinets and desks here, and then we can pass through a big broken wall to the adjacent hallway. This connects back to that loft area where we came in, or we can turn southeast to open a door to the left. This is another office space with cubicles, desks, and filing cabinets. Nothing of interest here. Heading out a broken wall back to the hallway, we can round a corner to see another atomic V8 proudly on display. These really were gorgeous cars. I would have loved to have seen one before the war. And we find ourselves on the platform at the top of the stairs, near to that lower level, with the big mound of rubble that we leapt upon to shoot the ants. This leaves one path forward to pass through the double doors to the south. We see a lot of ant evidence here. Egg clutches piled on the floor. More clutches hanging from the ceiling. And on the ground in the middle of the floor is a dead raider. Talon Company and Dead Raiders? Exactly how many ants will we find here? After looting the desks and cabinets, we see that these employees really loved cars. They even have toy cars nearby. Maybe to help inspire them. To the south, we see a door to the Corvega factory. That leads us to another cell. So before we head that way, we can turn around and go east. Opening this door, oh... Okay, well, that would have led to a bathroom. We see a sink in there, but it has long since caved in. So, our only path forward is to open the door to the south to the Corvega factory. Immediately on the other side, we get spotted by ants. Was that all of them? Probably not, I still hear skittering around out there. This factory floor is intimidating. 
we arrive out a pod, and we see more pods all around us. Pods on the ground floor, pods hanging in the middle of a wall, pods floating at the top of the room, all connected by a series of intricate stairways and catwalks. We'll have to explore these pods and the perimeter of this factory floor, but first we need to make sure it's safe. We see shelves of Corvega hoods and tires surrounding us in every direction. Which way to go? Well, we'll start by heading up some stairs to the west, leading to one of these lower level floating pods. This leads to a doorway, which brings us to another factory floor. And here we find more ants. Whoa! What is that thing? Does it have wings? That was an ant queen. We killed the queen, but there are more ants here. We'll probably have to explore the catwalks to finish them off. These ant queens are rare to the game. There are only three queens in the entire game, and on the corpse of the ant queen are ant queen pheromones. This is one of only four ant queen pheromones found in the game. It is a consumable, not considered a food, but technically considered a chem. It grants three charisma for four minutes at the cost of three intelligence and three perception. Quite a steep cost for three charisma. But instead of consuming it, we can save it to complete an unmarked quest at Rivet City called A Nice Day for a Right Wedding. We'll cover that quest and Rivet City in an upcoming episode. But for now, we've got this factory to explore. This second factory floor is just as cluttered as the first. More shelves, each of which is covered with hoods and tires. Looks like we need to start heading up to the catwalk. There are many paths up there. We'll start by taking the eastern stairs. At the top of the stairs, we see three paths forward. We can continue west or head south into another pod. We'll start by heading south. Here we see more ant clutches and ooh, two more corpses. Looks like Raiders and Talon Company were not the only ones to meet their end here. We find another mercenary with a laser rifle lying dead on the ground. And next to his corpse is a wastelander, possibly the person who had hired this mercenary. But why did they come here? Could it have been to get the Ant Queen pheromones? And if so, perhaps it is common knowledge that Ant Queen pheromones act as an aphrodisiac. Beneath her corpse is a single piece of jet. We may have to move her to get it. And on the desk next to these corpses is a copy of Dean's Electronics. That brings us up to six books. As all my skills are maxed at 100, I guess I'll just use these as player home decorations. We find two stim packs nearby, and this pod is a dead end. So heading back out to the catwalk, we can turn west. This winds us back towards the room with the Ant Queen. We see a path to the south-southwest, which would bring us back down to her, but since we just came from there, we'll instead turn around and head north. We see red dots on our Pip-Boy compass. Looks like there are more ants out there. Oh! Over here. We'll get them. <laughs> sure enough, we'll have to be careful. The catwalk snakes around the perimeter of this second factory floor. We'll start by heading north. This catwalk leads to a large platform overlooking the factory floor where we can pick off a few more ants. Heading up the stairs into the next pod, we can pass through it until the path turns east, and then it turns south to complete this room's perimeter. Down this southern path, we see more containers to loot with caps and random scrap. Out this pod, looking across the way, we see another ant. Continuing south, we finish the loop, but we do see a closed door to the east. Heading inside, we see smoke lingering in this pod, and the pod overlooks the factory floor to the east. This appears to be the factory where we came in. After looting containers in this room, including a first aid kit on the wall by the door, we can exit this pod via a staircase 
to the east. This brings us down to a catwalk, which either continues to the factory floor or heads up to another floating pod to the north. Here we find some boxes, which are a great source of railway spikes. I walked away with over 100 railway spikes from these two boxes alone. Turning around, we can continue exploring to the east. When done, this pod opens up through a small path leading south and then to the east again, bringing us down a staircase to the factory floor. And with that, we've explored every pod and all three sections to the Corvega factory. We can head back to the entrance, out the door, and into the moonlit night. Back at home, we need to find something to do with all these books we just looted. I'll just stack them on this shelf for now. And with that, we complete a short series touring all of the automotive factories and corporate offices from both Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. The nuclear-powered vehicles of the Fallout universe are some of the most iconic and beautiful pieces of art from the series, in my opinion. I love the way they look, which is why I had so much fun collecting them all in my video on the cars of the Fallout universe, which you can watch here. Bethesda chose a very distinct and different style to the cars in Fallout 4 compared to the vehicles in Fallout 3. The ones from Fallout 3 are much more angular and more closely resemble the cars from Fallout 1 and 2. The ones from Fallout 4 are a bit rounder, more streamlined. I prefer the ones from Fallout 4, but they're all gorgeous. Which do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. I publish weekly Fallout content here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. Now I am become Death, the Destroyer of Worlds. These are the very words that entered the mind of Oppenheimer upon witnessing the world's first nuclear detonation. They were also recited by Nick Valentine upon witnessing a certain nuclear detonation on the island near Far Harbor. This beautiful shirt comes in a wide array of colors and in a variety of sizes. You can even find the designs on other products like mugs, posters, stickers, and so forth. I have many other designs available in the shop, so if you're interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with a brand new video. Thank <laughs> you.